Hey, welcome to Chuck Norris November, guys. And uh, for those of you that have been watching along, thanks for watching. Real quick review of the last three Chuck Norris movies that I have to do for my top 10 list for the month of November 2024. Here we go. What's up, guys? Mr. Dan here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Norris November video. If you're watching in this on November 24th, 2024, then tonight uh, at 7 p.m., I'm going to have my ranking of 10 of the Chuck Norris films that I watched on the channel. It should be a lot of fun. I have some special categories at the end. Best villain, uh, best co-star, you know, best fight scene, things like that. So please go ahead and check that out. If you're watching this at a later date, come back and check out some of my Chuck Norris videos and check out that countdown. Monday, I have my final Martial Arts Monday review of Lone Wolf McQuaid. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of out of order here, but I decided to just wrap everything up today as far as filming uh, so I can concentrate on the Thanksgiving holiday and and uh, other topics beyond that. Got some other martial arts films that I'll be reviewing shortly. Uh, so what I want to do here is just do a real quick review of three of the films that I haven't reviewed that will be in my 10 films, I've watched a lot more than that. I've watched almost all the films I'm going to do for next year. 10 films this year, 10 films next year. Uh, not have it narrowed down the exact 10 for next year, but I'm pretty close. I got like nine of them picked out. So anyway, we've got Hellbound, Code of Silence, and Silent Rage. I've mentioned this a few times, Silent Rage. Uh, also, and again... This entire Norris November was inspired by Horrific Nightmares Jam and The Horror Man. I've already watched their live stream, rewatched their live stream from last year where they ranked their top 10 Chuck Norris films. Always great to get their opinion. Uh, and they they have both reviewed Silent Rage, which I wasn't going to rewatch, but I was like, I just couldn't help it. I was like, you know what? It's such a good movie. I got to check it out again. Um, so Code of Silence, rewatch from last year. Hellbound, I just got... Uh, on Friday, if you watch my Physical Media Friday video, first time watch. Just real quick, let's do Hellbound first. I said something, I saw some knights and I said, well, this might be a time travel thing. Why well, was that my first thought? I don't know. There's a scene in the beginning, back in the Middle Ages, where an artifact is, uh, some knights in shining armor trying to get a hold of an artifact and to prevent the release of evil. Really good scenes. You know, a lot of times interior scenes of like caves and things kind of look kind of fakey. It, it was pretty well done. That whole sequence was really well done. All the icrews who played the knights and everything were really well done. The villain in this is a little bit over the top. Uh, it's played by Christopher Neem. I don't know what his instructions were, but he didn't hold back. Now, it's interesting. Christopher Neem has actually a collection to Hammer horror films. He was in a few. I believe Dracula... 72 AD, perhaps, and a few others in, of the later ones. And if, if you guys know me, you know I love Hammer Horror. So that was kind of interesting. And basically, Chuck and his partner, and by the way, their last names are Shatter and Jackson. It's awesome. His partner's played by Calvin Levels, who I'm not really familiar with, but who did a fine job in this. Uh, they basically get embroiled in this. There's like a murder or something. I'm not going to lie. I forget a lot of the details, and I just saw it. Um... They end up in the Middle East. Uh, they meet up with a kid who's like a pickpocketer and there's some comedy elements and the kid ends up kind of helping them out a little bit. But uh, they sort of have to go to this archeologist who's of course played by a very attractive woman, played by uh, Sherry J. Wilson, I believe, uh, who I believe was on Walker, Texas Ranger, I'm not sure. Uh, she ends up helping them and then they get involved in this supernatural contest with uh, the bad guy. I, I thought it was pretty good. Pretty, pretty entertaining film. Where does it rank? Where will it rank with some of Chuck's other supernatural uh, slash horror films? Of which there are more than you think. Uh, <laughs> tune in tonight or tune in to that countdown to find out. Then you got Silent Rage. You know, again, check out... Uh, the reviews from Horrific Nightmares Jam and The Har Man, if you want a more in-depth review, but really good. I really, I would, you know, really enjoyed rewatching this. I enjoyed seeing Brian Libby. You know, I picked him out uh, in the Octagon. He's got a pretty, uh, somewhat substantial role. But I love the way they they saw this guy and said, you know what, he would make a great villain for this film. Uh, 
I mean, there, this is straight up horror in parts. I mean, he plays a genetically altered, psychologically troubled guy who comes back after getting killed by Chuck. He's resurrected by some doctors. I mean, this is like part Frankenstein, part Halloween, part Chuck Norris, part, part Walker, Texas Ranger. Before that, it was a thing. <laughs> I mean, he plays a ranger. Look at this picture on the inside. I mean, you almost think that would come from Walker, Texas Ranger. Filmed in and around Dallas, Texas. And, you know, he gets out and he stalks a couple people. POV shots from outside of the house, inside of the house. He straight up murders a couple people. Uh, all of the acting in this is really good. You know, a lot of people would criticize it and dump on it. And people have dumped on it. They've dumped on little... They've taken 30 seconds here and there out of context. It's very low-key. You're never going to accuse Chuck Norris of overacting. All the scenes with him and his partner, uh, one of his... Uh, partners uh one of the other officers played by uh steven uh first who we know from animal house flounder you know they're they're kind of it's, it's almost like you're a fly on the wall whether you're listening to the doctors talk or ron silver and his wife have a conversation as they're being they don't know they're being stalked by this killer or chuck trying to sort of cheer up his partner who who's kind of an, an inept and uh you know he's steven first so he's he's kind of a sizable guy he kind of lacks confidence you always, it feels like you're a fly on the wall. The conversations are very natural, you know? And, you know, a lot of people will praise other actors who give these performances which are kind of a little bit overblown and they're obviously acting. You know what I mean? Like I said, you feel like you're just a fly on the wall listening to a conversation. Great stunts, great fights. I love the final fight. Chuck has to pull out some moves which are a little bit different to defeat this killer, and I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, just a really solid one. And then you got Code of Silence, probably one of his most uh, conventional, one of his objectively best films, directed by Andrew Davis, who would go on to direct The Fugitive uh, and many other classics, starring many of his, uh, the actors that he would use to play cops. Sorry if you guys can hear the heat. The heat kind of fires up pretty hard in this room, which is a good thing, as I'm adjacent to the garage, but uh, it's that time of year. Uh, you got Henry Silva as the villain with his, his scary face. <laughs> You've got a really good uh, scene in the beginning with, with a, a, a drug deal that goes bad and the, the cops are kind of closing in. and It's essentially like a pretty conventional uh, cop movie and also part, kind of part Serpico because Chuck doesn't really uh, support an officer who, who probably shouldn't be in the field anymore due to his age, who... Uh, covers up a, a accidental shooting and it, it's it's pretty good so the cops are not all the cops are on his side uh it's also got some humorous bits there's a bit where <laughs> a couple uh criminals come in they kind of they want to rob this bar where the cops hang out that doesn't end well for them and then you have uh john mahoney shows up as a representative of this company that's creating like a uh something called the prowler which is a remote controlled uh police robot what i like about it is they didn't go too far over the top with it you know it's already a little bit dated to be honest with you but at the time it wasn't like it doesn't it doesn't feel like they were throwing in like a sci-fi element it feels like kind of realistic so of course when chuck goes on his uh, one man crusade at the end or one man fight against the, the bad guys in a warehouse of course with all kinds of barrels and pallets and hiding places uh he uses this robot and it's pretty cool. It's definitely pretty cool. Like I said, it's not too over the top or unbelievable. Uh, and Dennis Farina plays his partner. And, uh, you know, I keep saying Chuck has a way of hiring veteran actors. And I guess he had been acting for a few years, but I forget he was a cop for like 20 years before getting into movies. So he, acting wise, he was still somewhat new, I think at the time. And he, he does a great job. One of the best sort of partner relationships that Chuck has in any of his movies. Really solid film. There you go, guys. What are your thoughts on these three films? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you missed my Chuck Norris content, you can go back and watch it anytime. Chuck Norris reviews. Check out that top, top uh, 10 list and uh, come back again. If you're watching this in the future and it's closer to uh, November 2025, come back in November 2025. If all goes according to plan, I'll have 10 more Chuck Norris films to focus on. Thanks a lot, guys. Later.